Over the years, I've interviewed fascinating people from all walks of life. And some of the best interviews are with authors, public intellectuals, people with strong opinions like these two. Do you accept uh, that you're now seen by some, rightly or wrongly, uh, as a bit of a conspiracy theorist? Um, I accept that a bunch of headlines exist and that that was something that came up actually last October. Um, if you want to ask me a specific well, follow-up question, well, I, I do. Just, let's run through. Let's yes. run through a few I, of the I things. I do not agree that I'm a let's, hysterical. Well, let's lunatic. run through a few of the things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, shock horror. The Republican presidential candidates who say when they're asked about climate change, they say all of this stuff to tackle climate change isn't about protecting the environment. It's a cover for left-wing people to try and restrict capitalism, change our free market mm -hmm. way of doing things, bring in big government and socialism. I actually have a chapter in the book called "The Right Is Right" about the fact that I believe that. They do understand, you know, they're not right about the science. They're right that if climate change is true, their whole ideological project that says, you know, government has to get out of the way, let's free the market, um, that whole project has a big problem. That first person you saw there was Naomi Klein, the acclaimed Canadian academic and author who's been a leading critic of neoliberalism for more than two decades. The second person was Naomi Wolf, the American journalist and one-time prominent leftist feminist who now embraces many of the conspiracy theories beloved on the right. Wait, was it the other way around? It was. We got it the wrong way around. It's understandable when people get the two Naomi's mixed up, which happens a lot. Both are erudite, outspoken women. Both are North American social critics, prominent Jewish voices, similar family backgrounds. There was a time when both of them even had partners called Avi. Naomi Klein still does. The first line of Klein's Wikipedia entry reads, not to be confused with Naomi Wolf. And you can find a similar disclaimer at the top of Naomi Wolf's Wikipedia page. It's been an issue for years and a thorn in Klein's side, in particular as she regularly is attacked for sharing misinformation on COVID vaccines, ISIS, the Occupy Wall Street protests, Edward Snowden and more. But Naomi Klein didn't do any of those things. Naomi Wolf did, as one pithy Twitter user helpfully tried to clarify in 2019 with a short poem, if the Naomi be Klein, you're doing just fine. If the Naomi be Wolf, oh buddy, oof. And now that identity confusion is the ostensible subject of Naomi Klein's new book, Doppelganger, A Trip into the Mirror World. Klein gained fame decades ago as the author of the book's No Logo and Shock Doctrine, widely praised and heavily cited left social critiques. But Doppelganger is a bit different. Klein looks on in horror and in fascination as Wolf, her doppelganger, goes on Tucker Carlson and Steve Bannon and uses the broad strokes of Klein's own social critiques to undermine faith in vaccines, in journalism, in civil society in general. As the New York Times' very positive review of her book puts it, by mapping the evolution of her doppelganger, along with other pockets of online paranoia that flourished during the pandemic, Klein traces how well-intentioned liberals begin to mirror the anti-vaxxers. We defined ourselves against each other, and yet we're somehow becoming ever more alike, willing to declare each other non-people. She carefully untangles on the right a mimicking of beliefs and concerns that feeds off progressive failures and silences. And, perhaps most startlingly, startlingly, in this mirror world, she writes, Steve Bannon is watching us closely, the issues we are abandoning, the debates we aren't having, the people we are insulting and discarding. He is watching all of it and he's stitching together a political agenda out of it, a warped mirror agenda that he is convinced is the ticket to the next wave of electoral victories. It's an agenda too few on our side of the glass have tried to comprehend. It's that last part that's critical to Klein. Too many hashtag resistance liberals are willing to call out the new fascism and ignorance for what it is, but they're also too reluctant to call out the contradictions of polite liberal society that the Bannons and Wolfs seize on. They're too reductive, she argues, and that's what she wants us to challenge. So, what is the way out? Joining me now is Naomi Klein. Her new book is Doppelganger, A Trip into the Mirror World. Naomi, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I have read your me. books since I was in college. Mm -hmm. Since I read No Logo, I read Shock Doctrine. This is a very different book. It is. It's a very, and you write the opening line of yours in this book, and I want to read it out. In my defense, it was never my intent to write this book. I did not have time, no one asked me to, and several people strongly cautioned me against it. So why did you do it, Naomi? <laughs> what, what made you want to kind of stop writing about, you know, the, some of the stuff you've written about and write about conspiracies and go down weird rabbit holes? It is admittedly a weirder book, but we are in weirder times. That's true. And I, you know, all of my books, the ones that you mentioned, I'm, I'm pleased that you were reading me in college. It makes me feel a bit old. Um, but 
you know, I try to map our political moment. Uh, I, I did do that with the shock doctrine, with this changes everything. Um, we are in a moment where reality is dissolving in front yes. of us, where a not in insignificant portion of the population, perhaps 50 percent on a bad day, seems to have just decided to believe in their own version of reality. And we all know people who changed yep. during the pandemic. I mean, especially since I've been touring with this book, I hear, I can't talk to my mom. I, I can't talk to my, my sister. You know, they've gone down the rabbit hole. So it struck me at a certain point that if I wanted to write about this vertigo, I had to do it from the inside. Uh, I, it had to feel like falling, but we get out, I promise. So we don't stay down there. The subtitle of the book is A Trip into the Mirror World. Mm -hmm. Briefly define for our viewers, what is the mirror world? Yeah, so I was really struck when I... So the book is not about Wolf, I want to say. Yes. It really uses her as a case study for these people who have dramatically changed. I think it would be shocking for some of your viewers who knew her in her beauty myth days or as an advisor to Al Gore yes. to know that she does not just appear on Steve Bannon's show. I mean, she's, she plays the role almost of, of a co-host. There are periods where she is on every single day. They co-wrote a book together filled with vaccine misinformation. They put out T-shirts wow. together. I, I mean, it is, it is the weirdest buddy movie that you could possibly imagine. Um, so, you know, she is this device, I think, to understand this, this, this migration of the minds and... Yeah, like I said, I had, I, I had to, it had to, it had to take some strange turns to follow it. So there have been strange turns, as you mm -hmm. say. Reality yeah. is dissolving. There is this mirror world. Mm -hmm. But you've also made your name writing about what some people, other people, might call conspiracy theories, left conspiracies about the way the world is run. And you talk about the manipulation of events by financial political elites that sure. undeniably happens. What would you say to critics who say, well, what is the difference? between the conspiracies that you push about the way the world is run and the conspiracies that the Steve Bannons and Naomi Wolves and Tucker Carlson's and Joe Rogan's push? You know, all, all, you know, conspiracy, the word actually means to breathe together, right? So really all we're talking about is people getting together, making some kind of a plan that they don't want the public to know about. Uh, it would put investigative journalists out of business yes. if we were not able to try to expose some of those plans. That's the, that's the work that we do. <clears throat> and it is important for us not to be so reactive. You, you asked me what the mirror world is. You know, the mirror world is this, this fantasy land that is being constructed where there is a replica of everything we're doing on this side of the glass, right? So, you know, it, people get kicked off Twitter, they start Getter. Uh, they can't do their fundraising, uh, you know, on GoFundMe, they start Go Send Go. Uh, uh, you know, they have their own currency, they have their own products, they have their own presidential impeachment that is just starting now. They have their own president. They don't accept that this <laughs> exactly. president is legitimate. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but the danger of this kind of mirroring is that is that people who are not part of this fantasy react by just being against everything that they are for, right? Yes. Um, or for everything that they are against. And that, that's the part, you know, you read some passages of the book where I worry about becoming overly credulous and being like, oh, con no, no, there are no, there's no such thing as conspiracies. Look, we just, we just passed through the, 50, the 50th anniversary of the overthrow of Salvador Allende in Chile, yes. and we're getting more documentation. And that's the kind of thing I've written about over the years. There's a difference between showing your work, proving it. Yes. I call these folks not conspiracy theorists, but conspiracy influencers. That's good. There is not a theory. It contradicts itself all the time. That's One good. minute COVID's a bioweapon, the next minute it's a cold. They never try to resolve yes. the two. Okay. Uh, very good points. Um, you have this kind of formula for the trajectory of people like Naomi Wolf and others. Quote, I could offer a kind of equation for leftists and liberals crossing over to the authoritarian right that goes something like narcissism, grandiosity, plus social media addiction, plus midlife crisis divided by public shaming equals right-wing meltdown. I know it's a bit of a joke, but how do you explain? Joke? Well, how do you explain <laughs> people like Wolf, and there are others yeah. whose names I'm not going to take now, yeah. but who have claimed to be leftists and liberals over the years, but have recently found themselves in the warm embrace of this new right, which is a right that is more racist and fascistic than it was 10 or 20 years ago, and yet right. is attracting more right. people so from the quote-unquote left. Right. I mean, authoritarianism is surging around the world. It is a big deal to make common alliance. I mean, Naomi Wolf wrote an entire book warning about how liberal societies tip into yes. authoritarianism, and now she's palling around with Bannon. Who is palling around with Viktor Orban, uh, Giorgia Bologna in Italy, Bolsonaro? You know, it is a, an internationalist surge. Um, so this is a real threat, and we need to be clear about it. But you know, the reason why I did that sort of half-joking formula, I think the social media addiction is key, and this is why I call them conspiracy influencers. 
you know, in the in another lingo, we might call them clout chase, chasers. I've covered large-scale shocks and disasters for a long time, as have you. It's not new for there to be conspiracy theories yeah. that surge during moments where, which are very confusing, and COVID was one of those moments. People were grasping for something that could make sense of this novel virus. We didn't yet understand yes. it. It was new. What is different about this moment, uh, and different from any other of these moments where I've seen conspiracies surge, is that conspiracies are now monetizable within the attention economy. Yes. So if you are first out of the gate with the wildest theory, then you get the followers, you get the clicks, you get the subscriptions, you get the donations. And it gets um, mainstreamed as well. And what? It gets mainstreamed as well by one part of the political spectrum. It gets mainstreamed, and then, and then, and then I think maybe even people on the other side of the political spectrum are worried about its tripwires and become more timid, and that's the part that really bothers me. I mean, I always me. think about after 9-11, for all his many, many sins, mm -hmm. George W. Bush obviously wasn't in his interest, but the right didn't push truth or theories about 9-11, whereas after January 6, you have members of Congress pushing ridiculous conspiracy theories about 1-6, which is mm -hmm. just a different level mm -hmm. of mainstreaming, and it does my head in. I, I got asked very quickly, you, there's a great uh, opening to chapter six of your book where your husband says, really, it's 11 o'clock on a warm night in early June. He walks in on me doing yoga before bed. When he arrives, I am in pigeon pose, breathing into a deep and challenging hip release. And yes, OK, I'm also listening to Steve Bannon's War Room. So you really did your research. Uh, I just got to ask the question. There are only so the many hours in the day. So the book's I... done. The book's done. You're on book tour. I got to ask, are you still listening to Bannon? Is that I... something you could shake? I check in. I think it's important to know what they're doing, what their strategy is. And, you know, the book, in, in many ways, is more about him than her, uh, because she leads me down the rabbit hole yes. like the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, but it's really about who you find down there. And, you know, what I think she is getting from this alliance with Bannon is not all that interesting. I think she's getting a, a huge platform, one that she had lost, uh, uh, you know, among liberals for a variety of reasons. What he's getting from her is more worrying. Because, as we know, white, democratic voting women are... That, that's, they, they have not been able to peel away a significant portion. He calls it MAGA+. Plus. Uh, and we know that in 2016, he did successfully peel away a portion of the Democratic base yes. that was mostly male, that had voted for Democrats again and but again. But he wants white women. He wants white women. And he, and he, you know, what he did in 2016 was look at the way a lot of working class folks were really upset about free yes. trade deals. Um, and he, and, you know, he fed Trump the line that this is the way so to get them. It's Next, interesting. You're going after the COVID model. You mentioned <laughs> working class and trade deals, and yeah. you've mentioned gender and race. So you say in mm -hmm. the book, when entire categories of people are reduced to their race and gender and labeled privileged, there is little room to confront the myriad ways that working class white men and women are abused under our predatory capitalist order, with left wing movements losing many opportunities for alliances. You say it's highly unstrategic to engage in kind of reductive labeling of your opponents. And I want to say, Aside from the fact that a lot of these people, these Trump folks, QAnon folks, in my view, are in a cult and aren't actually that persuadable, yeah, yeah. What, let me push back and say, what yeah. would you say to people who say, actually, for those of us, someone like myself, yeah. who's a brown Muslim immigrant in the United States, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, we shouldn't have to, we don't want to have to kind of go out and constantly make the case to this supposedly disillusioned, uh, left behind white working class and have to say, you know what? Accept us. You know what? Let's find some common ground. There's this mm -hmm. argument about privilege, yeah. which says actually the victims of bigotry sh shouldn't be the ones who are burdened with kind of convincing, persuading, engaging with the bigots. What do you say to that line of argument? I think if we're talking about a political project, which is what, you know, I'm talking about how to beat fascism, you know, and I, I believe from studying history that every victory of the fascist right is also a story of fragmentation on the anti-fascist left. Yeah. I think we need to take it incredibly seriously. And I am not saying, you know, let's all hold hands with racists and transphobes. What I am saying is that Steve Bannon mixes and matches things that are true and things that are very dangerous and untrue. So what I think we should do is deny him the power yes. of taking the true things, yes. like standing up to big pharma, standing up to big tech, um, you know, speaking to that feeling of, of life becoming more insecure and more precarious, which, which is not the same as pandering to racists. Agreed. Every political project that wants to win has to have a horizon of a future in which everybody can see themselves. And I'm not which, sure we've done and that. And you mentioned well Big Pharma, which the Biden people would say, we are doing that. Look what we just announced. And I do want to talk about that in a moment. Mm -hmm. Just one last quick sure. question on specifically on the book, which is Naomi Wolf told the New York Times last month she has not read your book. Have you reached out to her? Has she reached out to you? I did Ask try you. to interview her. Um, and I, She was busy getting her booster shot? Uh, I, 
I, I have no comment. OK, fair <laughs> enough. Um, just on the current political scene, before I get to, I do want to ask about Biden, but you mentioned impeachment earlier. Yeah. We have this mirror world impeachment now, yeah, right, where the Republicans are saying, we're going to impeach Joe Biden because you impeached Donald Trump, effectively. They're, they're almost... Kevin McCarthy was also saying yesterday, no, Nancy Pelosi set the precedent. This is why we're doing it this way. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, and... So, you know, this is the game. This is the game they've been playing. Uh, it's whatever you say bounces off of me. I mean, Trump did it with fake news. You know, part of what they're trying to do is drain the impeachment of Donald Trump of any kind of political yes. force, right? Because if they're both impeached, then 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 does it really matter, right? Uh, and it's just an absurd mirroring, right? The obsession with Hunter Biden when you look at the grift of the Trump kids. Yeah. Um, we can't control that. They're going to keep doing it. The question is, what are we going to do? And where I think we lose ground is when, you know, you quoted earlier the part of the book where, uh, you know, when we start acting like them and say really snide things like, well, if you don't want to get vaccinated, maybe, maybe we'll get rid of a bunch of stupid people, right? Then we sound more like them. Then we're not embodying values of actually okay. cherishing uh, human life, which I think should be a kind of baseline value I, that we can I, all agree on. You I know? think we can all agree on it. <laughs> Joe Biden claims to be the most pro-union president, labor union president, said during the campaign he was going to be the most progressive yeah, president. Yeah. Um, a lot of progressives have given him a lot of credit for a lot of things he's done. For example, we mentioned pharma and Medicare negotiating uh, with big pharma. First time it's happened, 30 years, Democrats have been trying to do it. What do you make of the Biden presidency? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, th I think Joe Biden is is open to pressure, you know, and I, I've been talking to, to audiences at book events, and, and I think we should put pressure on Biden to be the best version of Biden he can be. You know, this is the interesting thing about doppelgangers, is Freud argued that the reason why we're drawn to them the idea that there's somebody else who is like a version of us out there in the world is because we know that there's many versions of us. So there's, and I think that's true of Joe Biden too. I yes. think there's the Biden of the Obama yeah. era. There's the pre, and and those versions. Uh, the senator uh, from MBNA, Delaware, credit card Biden. Sure. Yeah. But. And the Biden we have is actually more progressive, and I don't think that's because. Biden has changed. I think that's because more progressive movements are influencing him. So I think it's very important to keep pressuring him. There's been there's been the, some and, real progress. You know, I do a lot of work on climate, so yes. I'm going to have to and say I, it's not enough. Well, we're going to talk about climate <laughs> in a moment before I let yeah. you go. But just in terms of the pressure, a lot of the pressure has come from Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who was someone you campaigned for yeah. in 2016 and 2020? Someone who campaigned alongside you was Cornell West, who's now running as a third party candidate. Mm -hmm. Bernie oh. Sanders has been out there saying. Cornell West shouldn't probably run because, as you say, we can pressure Joe Biden and fascism's at the door, as you mm -hmm. say in the book. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a young leftist who says, Naomi Klein, you're one of my heroes, I've read No Logo, I've read This Changes Everything, you know, Biden's not progressive enough, he's not doing enough, I can't vote for him, I'm going to vote Cornell West. What would you say to I him? think the Democratic Party should really take that seriously, to, to, should take that feeling of we've tried everything, people feel really kind of locked in into the system. It, I, I, you know, I, teach, I teach undergrads, I hear this a lot, like this feeling of like, you know, you guys all tried to change the system and it didn't work, you ran, you know, Bernie and the yeah. squad and... and I don't think the Democratic Party wants to have young people feeling like yeah. they need sort of these desperate measures. I, I, I don't think it's strategic right now. I mean, I've said I, I really worry about splintering. I wish they had a more uh, inspiring candidate. I wish Biden had was a. I, I wish the Democratic Party in general could be, do a better job of telling the story of important things they've done. But it's contradictory when you're doing great things on climate and you're approving new pipelines and, and, and new extraction projects. Okay. So that's a, that's a challenge. We will have to leave it there. Doppelganger, A Trip into the Mirror World. Fascinating book. Naomi Klein, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nettie. Pleasure.